Hey, Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about the VFD versus conventional systems. So I put together a comparison recently that shows uh, just kind of a cost comparison of VFD systems to conventional systems. So let's get into it. So example one, we've got a single family with a well that is 760 feet deep, static water level, 285 feet. So our total volume in the well, we've got 295 gallons of pumpable water, um, basically at any given time when the well is full. Uh, so we've got eight inch casing for the first 20 feet and a six inch casing for the uh, 100 feet. And then it goes down to a four inch casing for the remainder of the depth. So this is a pretty deep well. Um, so it's pretty common to transition to a cheaper casing like a PVC uh, type casing of four inch size. So this well is pretty low producing, six gallons per minute, and that kind of uh, shows in the depth. Generally, if you get good water, you don't go deeper. So uh, we're gonna put the pump at 739 feet. So that's gonna be 35, 21 foot sticks. Um, and then we add four feet for the pitless depth, at least in this area, uh, to get us to that 739. So it's a single family home. The distance from the well to the home is 100 feet. The desired operating pressure is 40 to 60 psi and the customer's desired flow is 10 gallons per minute now keep in mind this is completely made up but it, i did get this information off of an actual well um, so let's just crack straight into it here so we're going to do the parts list comparison only of the dissimilar parts um, everything else that's the same there's no reason to compare it um, so we're going to focus on those dissimilar parts. In the conventional system, we've got a two horsepower motor. So each one has a two horsepower motor. It's going to be the same pump and motor, uh, the difference being the single phase or three phase. So the conventional one, 580 for the motor, the wire, number six for the conventional system. We've got to go a little bigger for that uh, at 315 per foot. Uh, so we've got 62 gallon pressure tank versus a four gallon pressure tank two horsepower control box at $214 versus the constant pressure controller at 1340 uh, the motor saver 482 that's to keep um, to keep the pump from running dry if we because in this situation the well um, doesn't produce as much water as we're going to be pumping out of there so we're going to have a motor saver on there to turn it off now the constant pressure system automatically has that built in so we had to add that here we've got a flow regulator so we're trying to keep the pump operating efficiently and on the curve so we're going to put a flow regulator on it and of course the pressure switch is a part that's not in a convention or in a vfd system as well so the total difference in parts is um let's see twelve hundred dollars so the total price is 49.17 versus 37.17 and of course this is only the dissimilar parts um, so the difference is in favor of the vfd in this situation uh 1200 bucks that wire definitely added up quite a bit here 2600 versus 1700 uh, so let's just go to the next screen here um, so our well is going to produce 175 gallons per day for the residents and also an additional 50 gallons per day for irrigation so we're going to go through the actual pumping cycle or the actual day in the life of the pump so in a conventional system so i've just kind of plotted out some imaginary usage to hit that total of 225 gallon pumped here so at 5 a.m the irrigation kicks on uh, runs 50 gallons and we get two pump cycles out of that total run time four and a half minutes and it's kind of the similar as we roll through all of these different uh, scenarios here 8 a.m shower uh, laundry lunch prep so on and so forth uh, so feel free to pause the video and take a look at that if you want to kind of take that all in uh, to summarize you've got 225 gallons pumped for the day the pump ran 11 times the motor is of course rated for 100 so that's why i put that here uh, our total runtime for the pump was 25.5 minutes to pump that 225 gallons. And our estimated de daily energy consumption, 0.9 kilowatt hours. So using the average uh, 15 cents per kilowatt hour, I think that's like the national average, uh, we're using about 14 cents per day to run that well pump on a conventional system and an annual cost or annual estimated energy cost is about $51.10. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into the VFD system here. 
So this one is the exact same scenario. The biggest difference that you'll notice is that on the VFD system, the pump runs the entire time that water is being used. So in the case of irrigation, um, we've got two pump cycles. It only comes on and off twice um, because we're switching zones. But then we've got a 20 minute runtime total for the irrigation. Uh, and then any time thereafter, somebody's taking some showers, we got 15 minutes of runtime uh, and so forth. So anyways, this, it's the same 225 gallons pumped. It, it is 18 cycles instead of, I believe, 15. Uh, and that is because basically the, um, the pump is gonna turn on every time we're gonna be using water. Our total runtime, 89 minutes, which is substantially longer than the other pump. Uh, 1.6 kilowatt hours is our estimated daily energy consumption. And though it is more efficient, it's that longer runtime that's actually killing us um, in terms of the energy consumption. Just that longer runtime is what adds up. So the daily energy costs are 24 cents, uh, and then the annual energy costs are about 87.60. So let's just summarize that up here. We've got the conventional system uh, and the VFD system summarized here. So the runtime on the VFD is what killed us. Uh, so it takes that overall cost up quite a bit. So in summary, the VFD system does consume roughly 70% more energy to do the same task. Uh, so let's break it down to a 15 year component wear and life cycle cost. Uh, so what we're gonna be looking at are some of the key components that are most likely to need to be replaced within that 15 year window um, and what the cost of those components are. So the control box is definitely an, a spendy one on a VFD system. Um, those typically only last about five to seven years on average. Um, they definitely can last longer, but on average, they only last about five years. So that replacement cost on the VFD uh, is about $1,300, and you're gonna replace that about three times in that 15-year cycle. Uh, the motor, of course, uh, 15 years on that, so you're gonna need a new one in about 15 years. Uh, the VFD motor, three phase, it does last longer, um, but I, I got a, a big asterisk here. Um, when you replace a motor, or when you replace a pump, a pump only lasts about 15 years, the same as a conventional motor. Uh, it'd be really strange to replace a pump and not replace the motor at the same time. So this is kind of a, a, one of those costs that you're probably gonna end up having to pay even though it's still working. Um, <clears throat> So anyways, you can see here, pressure tank, the cost difference, uh, that's about a 10 year part. Wire lasts forever, so um, I kinda wanted to highlight that in a conventional system. Yes, you do pay an arm and a leg for wire in the beginning, but wire lasts forever, and it, I mean, unless something it gets damaged because somebody physically causes a problem with it, either putting the pump down the well or, or something like that, or cuts it somehow, um, you're never really gonna have to replace that. So it's kind of a nice thing to notice that you are putting more money in a conventional system in the wire, but that's a component that's really reliable. Uh, and then the motor saver, of course, that's the one that's every 10 years type of a component as well. So when we put that all together and kind of add it up, our total uh, for that total cost over that 15 year period, comparing those components is about 1,378 for the conventional and about 4,000 for the VFD. That takes your cost per year uh, on a conventional system to about 114, 115, and then your cost per year on a VFD system to about 270. So when we factor that in to the, uh, to the total energy costs, replacement parts, initial expense, the conventional system does come out to be quite a bit cheaper in this situation, uh, whereas the VFD is quite a bit more money. So, um, you know, definitely there's some pros and cons attached there. So when you're making those decisions, if you want constant pressure, you've got a reason. But in this case, I would say that the conventional system just makes more sense. Uh, so we did another one of these comparisons. I'm not gonna take as much time kind of walking through every piece of it. So I'll just go through the different screens and just kind of quickly rush through it. Feel free again to pause the video if you wanna spend some more time on these screens. Uh, so well depth 93, this is a pretty shallow one um, because I felt like it was gonna be a much closer comparison. So we've got a really shallow well, 93 feet, 54 feet of static water uh, to the static water level. Um, 
distance to home is 150 feet, so we're not pumping terribly far. We do want 15 gallons a minute on this one. Uh, pump produ or well produces 20 gallons a minute, so we're definitely not at risk in this situation of exceeding that. Uh, so again, with the dissimilar part comparison, the motor, the wire, actually in this one, the wire size is the same. I didn't put a number next to it since it is the same. I just wanted to highlight that uh, because it wasn't in the last one we looked at. Uh, big old pressure tank for this one, 119 gallon versus an eight gallon. That's definitely a big cost difference. One horse box versus the uh, one horse constant, control, constant pressure control box. Um, that's quite a big difference as well. So the total price on the conventional $14.49, total price on the VFD $18.65. So the difference is definitely in favor of the conventional system on this one. So again, same exact uh, flow pattern. I just wanted to make it easy. 175 gallons plus 50 gallons irrigation, total of 225. Uh, in this case, the pump actually runs less cycles than our previous example in the conventional system uh, because we're pumping more water per minute and we've got that larger pressure tank. Uh, so total runtime, 16 minutes, same, pretty much the same usage, 0.9 kilowatt hours, so 13, 14 cents there uh, per day and then 47.50 per, uh, per year. The VFD system is pretty similar. Actually, I think it ended up being a little cheaper than the other one because of that higher flow rate. So it's actually running more efficiently at those slower speeds, uh, one could argue. Um, so 89 minute runtime, same as last time. Uh, annual 6205. So let's go to that summary real quick here. Um, so once again, we got killed on that overall runtime uh, in our energy costs. We're a little bit closer on this one. Uh, so 6205 versus 5110, about 30% more energy out of the VFD on this one. So we transition to the 15 year component wear and life cycle costs. Uh, you've got not a crazy amount of parts here, just, just the same as last time, control box, motor, and the pressure tank. And so let's get to the summary here. So the 15 year life cycle cost comparison summarized, we've got uh, 930, for that 15 year or 39.21 for that 15 year. So uh, when we put all that stuff together here, we come out with a number of 3,090 for the conventional and 67.16 for the VFD. So once again, in, in the long run, uh, the conventional system works out to be a whole lot less money. Um, so that is basically the summary I wanted to give you guys. I, I made a video recently on the VFDs and how I don't feel that they are as efficient at delivering water. Uh, and due to growing popularity, I think that people need to understand that there is a time and a place for a VFD system. So if you ever have a question, you're considering a VFD, uh, you wanna know what the pros and cons are, go ahead and give us a call here at RC Worst and we're happy to walk you through it, help you select the right equipment uh, for your application because don't get me wrong, there are places that VFDs are great, there are places that conventional systems make the most sense. So don't hesitate to call, we will catch you next time.